Hello, my name is Chip Carroll, and I get to spend this session with you to talk about school operation, how to operate your live school. We're going to discuss some important components that are needed to operate your live school successfully. The objective in what we're going to cover is to ha understand what these components are and how to implement them properly. So the components that we're going to discuss will be worship. After that, we'll discuss South African Theological Seminary and the credits that they award for those who properly complete live school. Uh, we're going to discuss homework assignments. We're going to discuss flock groups. And we're going to discuss prayer and intercession. So to begin with, what I'd like to talk about is worship. And I guess as a background to that, we might ask, what is worship? Or where does worship come from? Worship actually comes from the old English word, worthship. Now, if you think about it, we think, what is worship? Well, worship is singing praises when we come to church. But the truth is, is that we worship what we value, what has worth. So those things that we value the most in life are what we worship. Everybody is a worshiper. We want to be worshipers of God. Jesus is the treasure. So we want to be worshipers of Jesus. In the Greek, the word for worship often is translated from the Greek word proskunio. And it means to bow down. It's actually an act. So it's more than just songs and singing of praise and adoration, though it definitely includes that. Worship is an act of adoration. So secondly, I want to ask you, where do you worship? Where do we worship? Where do we go to worship God? Most people would say, well, we go to church on Sunday. But I want you to consider what Jesus says in John chapter 4, verse 21 through 26. In verse 21, when he's talking to the woman at the well, he says, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. What Jesus is saying is that worship will not be restricted to any physical location like the temple or the church building anymore. So where then do we worship? Well, in verse 23, he says, But the hour is coming, and now is, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is actually seeking such to worship Him. In other words, we worship Him wherever we are. We are not limited to a church building. I mean, can you see Paul and Silas in the jail, in the Philippian jail, going, Excuse me, jailer, you've got to let us go. We've got to go worship in the temple. We'll be right back. No, that's not what happened. They worshiped right where they were, right in the middle of prison. Unlike Moses, who kept telling Pharaoh, we must go three days' journey to worship in the desert. So, you and I, collectively, we are the temple of God. God resides in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Therefore, we worship Him wherever we are. Stephen was actually stoned to death in Acts chapter 7 for this very thing. And I just want to say that churches are not buildings. They are communities of believers, not brick and mortar. Communities of believers that come together to worship God. So, we've discussed what worship is. We discussed where do we worship. But the real question is, is how do we worship? In John chapter 4, verse 24, God, it says, God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Must. Why must we worship Him in spirit and truth? Because God is spirit, number one. It reminds me of John chapter 3, verse 7, where Jesus said, Do not marvel that I say you must be born again. Only born again believers can truly worship God. We must have a reborn spirit to be worshipers. Because those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Our spirit man is dead if we don't have Jesus inside who's regenerated us. So secondly, we must worship Him in truth. In other words, we must worship Him according to the Word of God. You cannot separate the Spirit and the Word. You cannot separate the Spirit and truth. 
We must worship Him in spirit and truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the living Word. They can't be separated. If I try to speak words, I have to breathe out. I cannot separate them. I can't do one without the other. We must worship God in spirit and in truth. So let's be worshipers of God. Now, certainly praise and worship and singing in a church service, that is a way to, to worship God. But let me just say that for Jesus, all of life was an act of worship. In actual fact, in the same chapter, John chapter 4, where Jesus has just been talking to the woman at the well, and the disciples have come back to him, he turns around and he tells the disciples in verse 32, he says, I have food to eat that you don't know of. And in verse 34, he says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Then in verse 35, he says, do not say there's still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look onto the fields. They are white unto harvest. For Jesus, fulfilling the will of Father, was worshiping him. It is the same for us. As a matter of fact, I want to remind you, which I'm sure all of you already know, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Paul says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. So everything we do should be an act of worship to our Father, including missions. Finally, I just want to point out that if you remember in watching Intro to Missions, Session 1, where the founder of, of Live School, Willie Crew, he spoke on, ultimately, it's not missions, it's worship. It's about worship. It's about finding people who will worship God in spirit and in truth. So we are wanting to make sure that our students are worshipers of God, that they are worshiping God in spirit and in truth. It actually joins us and we experience the unity that we have with Christ when we worship Him. This is God's plan to fulfill the Great Commission as it says in John chapter 17. That they may be one, even as you and I are one, Father. That they may be one with one another and that they may be one with us. That the world may know that you, Father, sent me. So, how are you going to help your students to become worshipers of God in spirit and in truth as a lifestyle. One of the ways to do that is to start out each school day worshiping with focused time of worship. I'm not talking about a long period of time, maybe five to 15 minutes where everybody's setting aside all the things that are filling their mind and focusing themselves on the Lord, spending time in genuine worship. So, Another way you could do this is to actually set apart specific, special times of worship, prayer, and fasting where you wait on the Lord. This will help your students become worshipers of God. The second component we wanted to discuss concerning running an effective live school is South African Theological Seminary's awarding of credits to live school students who properly complete the course. South African Theological Seminary, or SATS, recognizes those students who have achieved uh, a live school certificate as meeting their requirements to receive credits for certain certificate and degree programs that they have. A student might be awarded 60 to 90 credit hours assuming he meets the proper criteria. Our live school certification program is actually designed for you to meet those criteria. If you don't meet the requirements, you will not get a live school certificate. But let me just say 60 to 90 credit hours is quite a perk. That is a huge benefit for those who are going to continue education by extension with SATs. I mean, that is giving the student a considerable sum in, in equivalent of what, what money would be toward a degree. The requirements, though, for SATs are as follows. As a live school student, and to get a live school certificate, you must view no less than 90% of the sessions. There's 242 sessions. So that means you must complete a minimum of 218 sessions of viewing them. Now, if you do 217, 
guess what? You're not getting a certificate. So you facilitators need to keep a record and make sure your students are on track that they can receive certification. The second thing is, is that they actually must also do that many homework assignments. 90%, a minimum of 218 homework assignments, one A4 size paper for each session they watch or they will not receive live school certificate. They also must participate in outreach and the outreaches that you will have during the curriculum phase of the school and then also the outreach phase of the school. We don't want people coming just enjoying another seminar, another school, more information, more information and never applying it. Faith without works is dead. Live school is designed to have it be outcome based to put into practice what you teach so that we see results happen. Also, the live school student must pay live school organization the equivalent of 10 US dollars to receive a live school certificate, assuming he's met those prior qualifications or requirements. Also, you must understand that the student must make up any sessions that he's missed. He must make up any homework assignments that he's missed. And even if he has made up all the assignments and he has viewed all the sessions through makeup, 80% of those assignments and 80% or 80 of those sessions viewed actually must be viewed with his intake or he will be disqualified. We place high value on the impact and the interaction that comes from the students discussing the session. That means that if they miss 48 sessions, even if they make them up, they won't receive certification. So you must participate in the sessions with your intake of students. You understand that, I hope. Okay, now, to find out more about SATs, you need to please look at the website that they have, www.sats, that's S-A-T-S, dot edu dot z a or z a that's www dot s a t s dot edu dot z a you can also find more information in the data disk or on the data disk or flash drive that is with your live school unit when you get it the third component of operating a live school that we want to discuss are your assignments let me just break this assignment thing up into two different areas, class notes and homework assignments. They're different. The class notes are basically the student taking notes during the session to jog his memory about what the main points of that message were so that when he goes home, he can do his homework assignment. He is not to turn in his class notes as his homework assignment. Some students, will want to take every word that the professor or the instructor is saying down and write, 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 write. And they will miss everything that the Holy Spirit's wanting to do and minister to the hearts. And you'll have other students who won't write a thing and they will get home and they will forget what in the world it was that they watched or mix all the sessions that they watched up. And so they won't be able to do their homework assignment properly. So you will have to correct both of them and guide them both. You might have to tell some people, you know, you're taking too many notes, just write down the main points. Or you may have to go to Sister Susie and say, you know, you need to take some notes, the main points. You might have people who are wanting to take notes on a computer and they can't even type fast enough to take the notes and you're seeing they're struggling. I've actually had to tell students, you cannot take notes on the computer because you're missing everything that's being said. So write it on paper and you can put it on your computer later. So I want you to understand you need to encourage your students to take some notes, okay? Not too many and not too few, all right? Now then, when you get to the homework assignment, every student will be required to, to write an A4 size paper, full, not half, not three pages, but one full-size A4 size paper for every session they view and they'll turn it in. You as the facilitator are going to be the one that's going to be responsible to read, to comment, 
and to record as whether they have done or not done their homework properly. Okay? We'll cover a template later where you'll record that. It'll make it very easy for you to do, but you will actually have to be reading through those things. So you will want to make sure that your students write neatly. Tell them to write neatly and make sure you tell them, don't give me three or four pages. You don't want to read three or four pages of 20 people five days a week if you're doing a full-time school. That'll be very tough, okay? But let me, under, let me let you understand why is this a requirement? Number one, it's a requirement to get credits from South African Theological Seminary. But number two, and more importantly, by the time the school is done, by the time that intake is finished, that student, every student will have 242 homework assignments that they should be able to preach from. So the homework assignment is not simply a regurgitation of what is said on the video. It actually needs to have the interaction of that student with it. Yes, they'll have the main points, but it needs to have maybe what the Holy Spirit impressed on that student as he was watching. How, what, it, what, what illustrations or personal testimonies would the student use if he was going to share that same message? He needs to put that on the paper so that when he gets it back, he should be able to take that piece of paper and preach that message. The end result of that will be that he's going to have, or she's going to have, over four years worth of Sunday sermons if he needs it. That's huge in the area where I work. So, once again, I want you to emphasize and remember to, to tell your students about these things, about what the content of the homework assignment is supposed to be, the length of what it's supposed to be, and that they write neatly. <laughs>